Have you recently gotten a sewing machine and are feeling overwhelmed at all the different parts? This video will go over the basic anatomy of a sewing machine. Please note that different sewing machines will vary in appearance, but many of these aspects will be found on most machines. You'll always want to reference your manual. You may have a metal machine, a plastic one, or one with a plastic shell and a metal frame. Full metal machines are usually older, so great, but can be heavy. Machines made with plastic parts are lighter, but might not be able to handle all sewing projects and can break easier. Getting a machine that at least has a metal frame inside, even if the outside shell is plastic, is going to hold up better and do more of a variety of sewing projects. Let's start with the right side of the sewing machine. Here you'll find a slot for the electrical cord to plug the machine in, and also a slot to plug in the foot pedal. Once the foot pedal is plugged in, it goes on the floor to be pressed on by your foot and is what runs the machine. The large knob is the hand wheel or balancing wheel. It moves the needle by hand instead of using the foot pedal. Turn it and the needle moves up and down. Only turn the hand wheel toward you, not backwards as this might damage the machine. I use it when first starting a seam or when I wanna place the needle in a specific part of the fabric. Next is the spool pin. This can be sticking out of the top of the machine or a horizontal pin on the front or back of the machine. This is where the thread spool goes for threading the upper part of the sewing machine. You might also have a spool cap to be fitted over the top to help hold the spool in place. The smaller spool pin is the bobbin winder pin. It's for adding thread to the bobbin, which will be for threading the lower part of the sewing machine. So the thread spool is upper threading and bobbin is lower threading. There might be an adjustable screw that looks like a plus sign. Not all machines have this. This is the presser foot adjuster or how much pressure the presser foot is pressing down. If you wanna know more, check the description for a link. Next, the front of the machine. Your machine will either be computerized or manual. Manual will have dials to make adjustments, computerized will have a screen and adjustments are made by pushing buttons. Thread length and thread width are things you will frequently adjust. Thread length is how long each individual stitch is. It can be shorter for when working with delicate fabric or longer when working with heavier fabric. Normal range is two to 2.5. If you choose zero, your stitches won't go far. Selecting the highest number will be your basting stitch. Stitch width is how far the needle will move side to side while stitching. For a regular straight stitch, this will be zero. As you increase the number, it'll be more of a zigzag stitch. Stitch selector allows you to select different stitches. For computer type, select the stitch number. For a manual, turn the knob and then do adjustments to the stitch width and stitch length. You'll want to reference your manual. The back stitch button or lever is marked with a U-turn arrow symbol. By pushing this, the machine will sew backwards. This is how to do a knot or lock the stitches so they won't unravel. It should be done at the beginning and end of a seam unless it's a basting stitch. Machines have slots and thread guides above the needle area. This is for upper threading. This also contains the thread tension discs. It's important to thread correctly through these areas. To create a stitch, the upper and lower threads loop together with tension on each side. Otherwise, the upper thread might get sucked onto the lower side or vice versa. To see a video on threading or thread tension, check out the link in the description. Here's the upper thread tension dial. This controls the tension disc, either loosening or increasing the tension. Normal range for most projects is between three and five. Always test on scrap fabric to see if the thread tension dial needs to be adjusted. The needle area has a needle plus a thread guide right above it. This is the last part that gets threaded in upper threading. You may also have an automatic needle threader to help thread the needle. Then there's the presser foot. A standard foot will be attached, but you'll likely get other types to do different kinds of sewing. In the description is a link on presser feet. The presser foot can be raised and lowered with a presser foot lever. On the machine base is the needle plate. The hole in the center is where the needle goes into the machine to pick up the lower thread and loop it with the upper. The jagged metal teeth are the feed dogs. The feed dogs move the fabric through the machine. It only works if the fabric is pressed between the feed dogs and the presser foot, so the presser foot must be down. If you don't want the fabric to move, such as when sewing a button, some machines allow you to lower the feed dogs, but don't forget to raise them again after you finish, otherwise the machine will sew in place. On the needle plate, you'll notice lines. These lines are used to help you guide your fabric. This is what we use to maintain an accurate seam allowance. At the base of our machine is the lower threading section. This is where our bobbin goes. You might have a drop-in or inserted bobbin. 
our threading video goes over how to thread a bobbin. The last detail is on the left of the machine. This is a thread cutter. It makes it easy to do a quick thread cut when pulling your project from the machine. That's the basic makeup of a sewing machine. It seems like a lot, but once you start using one, it'll get more familiar and you'll be able to switch from one machine to another. Our book, Professor Pincushion's Beginner Guide to Sewing, Garment Making for Nervous Newbies, is now available to order. Go to professorpincushion.com forward slash books or click on the link in the description to see a list of vendors where you can purchase it.